Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is an Invis Qi wireless charger, and it's different from most of the other wireless chargers that you've seen out there. And well, what makes it different? First, I have to build a table, and then I'll show you. I will start off the project by preparing my rough sawn lumber. I'm using walnut that I milled myself on the bandsaw. I use the jointer to make two flat, square faces on all the lumber I plan on using. Two flat, square faces allow me to cut my pieces on the table saw and use the planer to get the pieces down to the correct thickness. If you do not have a jointer or thickness planer, you can still make a similar project using S4S lumber, which is pre-dimensioned lumber planed and sanded on all four sides. After jointing, I run my boards through the thickness planer to bring all the pieces down to final thickness. If I were planning ahead, I would have left the top boards and the shelf boards a little oversize so I could have made one more planer pass after glue up. But I didn't do it that way, so I had to be extra careful to be sure the boards were flat during glue up, but more on that later. Now with everything jointed and planed, I can start cutting out the parts of the table. I'm using this portable contractor table saw because at the time of filming, my big table saw is buried under a mountain of VW Beetle parts. I start with the leg blanks. They will need further planing. I'm able to get all four blanks out of this huge chunk of wood. Next I cut the parts for the table apron, top and shelf. I move to the chop saw and cut the legs and apron pieces to final length. I cut the top and shelf pieces long so I can dial them in after glue up. Speaking of glue up, I'm using my homemade three-way clamps along with some panel clamps to try to keep the boards as straight and aligned as possible. I could have used biscuits or dominoes to help with alignment, but I felt like the project was small enough and that they weren't required. While the glue is drying, I can work on the table legs. I start by making a diagonal notch in each leg to accept the bottom shelf. I make this cut by using a 45 degree jig made specifically for this operation. Next I add a taper to thin out the legs a bit. I use my quick and dirty tapering jig to make the cut. The small top on this portable saw makes using the tapering jig a little clumsy and I have to be extra careful to keep my hands safe while making these cuts. Tapering the legs in this way can leave a rough finish and some minor burn marks. I clean those up by running the tapers once over the jointer, just to smooth out the cut. Like I mentioned before, my table saw is buried, and that includes my router table. Since this is a small project, I'm comfortable putting a palm router in a vise and using it to round over all the edges of my table parts. After the glue has dried for about an hour, I pull the tabletop and shelf out of the clamps and use a sharp chisel to scrape off the excess squeeze out. By getting rid of it now, I will save myself a lot of sanding once the glue has cured. Off camera, I squared up the ends of the tabletop and shelf using the chop saw. I also cut them to final length. I add a decorative chamfer to the edge of the tabletop by tilting the table saw 26 degrees and carefully passing the top on its edge. This was probably the most sketchy of all the operations in the project, but I took my time and it all turned out okay. Using the chop saw, I cut off the corners of the shelf piece so they will interface with the notches on the table legs. Using a homemade drilling jig, I drill holes for dowels inside each table leg notch and in the edge of the clipped corners on the shelf. After a good bit of sanding down to 220 grit and a quick round over of the tabletop and shelf edges, assembly of the table can now begin. I add glue to the holes in the legs and the shelf and use a dowel to fasten them all together. My band clamp came in real handy, allowing me to hold the legs to the shelf while I dry fit the apron pieces. Before attaching the apron pieces, I remember to cut a groove on the inside so I can use clips to attach the tabletop to the table frame. I am using pocket holes to attach the apron to the legs. Since the shelf is glued in and the top will be clamped down with clips, I felt that pocket holes were plenty strong for this part of the project. To finish, I used several coats of homemade Danish oil. It really brings out the beauty of the walnut. With the table upside down, I mark and drill the holes for the tabletop hold down clips, and once installed, the table is now complete. Okay. 
Okay, so up to this point, it has just been a very straightforward construction of a solid walnut end table. So at this point, if you wanted to turn this tabletop into a wireless charging surface, you would have to take a normal wireless charger and you would have to route out a bunch of material on the underside of the tabletop in order to get that wireless charging surface as close to the top surface of the table as possible because most wireless chargers don't have enough power to charge through surfaces. They can barely charge, they barely have enough power to charge through a phone with a case on it and you know you could forget about it if you have like one of these like I have a pop socket on the back of mine uh, they just don't have enough power. This is where the Invis-Chi comes up comes into play. The Invis-Chi is a high power wireless charger and there's no need to modify your tabletop. This wireless charger is capable of charging through surfaces as thick as 30 millimeters which is about an inch and an eighth thick. So that counts for many surfaces that you use around your house. It could be nightstands, side tables, uh, dining tables, kitchen tables, desks, and even some countertops. Installation is very easy. They give you this um, cradle that you can slide the device in and they give you many mounting solutions. They give you 3M tape, screws, for the purposes of this video, since I haven't completely finished this table yet, I'm going to go ahead and use blue tack and stick it up on the underside of the table and then we will see how it performs. Now, now the top of my table has a nice big knot right in the middle of it and I'm going to center the charger over that knot just so I can use the knot as an indicator of where I need to place my phone. Along with the charger, Invis-Chi includes this device that helps you find the exact center of the charging field that's provided by the invisible charger. So it's five lights and they just kind of point you in the right direction. You set it on the surface and you can see it's got two lights here and you move it around until it's completely centered and you know that that's the exact center of your charging field. So once again, I put the tester on here and it lets me know that I need to move it in that direction a little bit. And right there is the exact center. Whoops. Right there is the exact center of our charging field. So right here. They provide a sticker that you can set down so you know exactly where it is, but I want to use a feature. I will move it so it's right here in the center of this knot. My next test is going to be my phone without the case on it. There we go. I don't know if you can see the charging icon right there, but it is charging. Now it's time for the big test. Let's see if it will charge my phone through the tabletop and through my case that has a pop socket on it. And there you go. Once again, it is charging. So this is great. I can't even charge my phone with my pop socket on it with a regular uh, wireless charger that's sitting on top of the table. So now I can charge it. I think I have to get it just right. Now I can charge it without having to take the phone out of the case. So this is amazing. So I'm thoroughly impressed with this product. It allows you to turn any surface into a wireless charging surface without having to make any modifications to that surface. The process of routing or chiseling out a spot to hide these. It's also great for decluttering your desktop or whatever top surface you have Right now I have a wireless charger that sits on top of my nightstand and I'm always bumping into it and it just takes up a lot of space. On top of that, if I want to wirelessly charge my phone, I have to take it out of its case and this eliminates the need to do that. 
So in my opinion, this is a very useful product that solves a very common problem that most of us have. So if you are interested in integrating an InvisChi wireless charger into one of your projects, you can follow the link that I've put in the description below and buy one for yourself. I'm not sponsored by InvisChi, but if you do purchase through my link, I do receive a small commission for your purchase. So if this project was interesting to you, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of woodworking, I just haven't done it recently, and I do a lot of other DIY stuff. Go ahead and put in the comments below where you would use one of these InvisChi chargers in one of your projects. I'm interested in hearing your ideas and seeing what you would do if you had one of these. I want to thank everybody for watching up to this point. My name is Tom, this is Southpaw Workshop. I will see you all next time.